man, I created that joint at the crib. <laughs> at the crib in my, in my room. Um, I was looking for something else to rap, like, because when I started rapping this year, I was putting out something every two weeks. And so I had one, uh, a free video from the My Block Live. And when I was looking for something, I was gonna like rap something like that was like upbeat, like fast and stuff. But then, man, um, I was looking at like the, the videos on the My Block Live platform. And I was like, man, like, I want to do something that will help uh, continue to showcase Virginia's versatility. So I was like, I can't do this upbeat joint, right? So I was like, I had prayed to God. I was like, Lord, help me uh, show our versatility so that when pe people come to this platform, they see that we all don't have this, like, one sound, you know what I'm saying? That there's this sound, there's this sound, and this this sound. So help me fill in the gap. Raspo made the beat. Um, Terrific engineered the joint. And of course, God is my ghostwriter. So <laughs> I'm just, you know, the uh, third party here. God had me change the beat. When he had me change the beat and like I heard it, I was like, dang, this is it. But I'm going to have to say some real stuff up here. I was like, Lord, you sure? He said, well, you said you was going to be more vulnerable this year, so what's up? <laughs> so um, I wrote that joint in my room within a, uh, I think, two days because I had to change the beat, and I had already set, like, the studio time for, like, Monday. It was, like, Friday <laughs> when I started writing the joint. Everything that I write has to be, like, not just real to somebody, it has to be real to me. It's real for me. And uh, those bars, just, man, I can't tell you like exactly how I came up with it because God is my ghostwriter. So every bar that I write, every syllable, every letter comes from God. He just gives it to me, I put it on the paper, it, it sounds good, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but the, the pain that it comes from is real. I'm telling you now, I don't care if it's a race, I'ma set my own pace on my mom. Ready, set, go. I'm ashamed that I used to shift the blame when I had done my part. Like said, it ain't so. Barely even took the time to just stop and use my mind or try hard. That was before. But now I don't figure why not start. I figure why not start. A hey. From the age of 16 all the way up until uh, last year when I turned 26, I had this thought, this idea in my mind that I would never live past 25. And so most decisions that I made subconsciously was like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to live past this age, so why plan for a life that I'm not going to live? Why sit here and prepare for anything or why sit here and worry about consequences when, hey, I'm not going to live long anyway? The whole race thing is like, bang, I feel like I'm late. Like I'm late to a lot of things, you know, being a man, uh, starting a life, I'm late to it. You know, I should have started, you know, when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, so here I am at 27, about to live. And so I'm like, I don't care like where society would think that I should be. Or, you know, I gotta get all these thoughts out of my mind of, I need to impress society. I need to impress the people around me because we're all competing, you know? Um, <laughs> a lot of this stems from just not being ready and not like not being ready to start and making excuses on why I can't start. And so it's like, it's time, why not? It's your life. I mean, it's my life, but it, it's your life. Go out there and live it. The biggest smile on my face when I'm around. 
You can't really tell that I'm hurting. Really do my best when I'm in public, keep my head from tilting down. But deep inside, I feel like a burden. Life has been a battle, a real fight. Not knowing if I would ever belong in the world. Not knowing if I would ever have an impact, a positive one at that. And so me going through uh, like being born without arms, I always never like wanted people like to pity me. So most times when I came outside, it was I'm making everyone laugh or making everyone smile. But while dealing with my own pain, so it's like you can see that I'm going to be the happiest person when I'm out in public. And when I'm around so many people, you won't, you won't ever be able to tell this stuff that basically wants to kill me. You won't ever be able to tell. I feel like everyone except me doesn't need help. Like I'm the only one in the world who needs help. And so I feel like a burden. Everybody steady in my ears saying I should keep going. Now realizing that my heart is torn. Some days I wake up excited because I know exactly what I'm doing. Other days I still wish I wasn't born. Mm -hmm. You know, you get out there in, in public after privately dealing with your own battles. And everybody's like, yeah, like, you, you got this. Like, you can do this. Like man you you go you go win like but knowing what is happening within you those people don't realize that those people don't realize that even though you're around them with the biggest smile that your heart is torn because it's like I don't want to live with this anymore and not just dealing with that for a month or two months dealing with that for your whole life saying oh my gosh I want to die I don't find purpose here on earth why would I be here and you know you get out there and people are like keep going <laughs> so um, half the days it's literally thinking I got this and then half of the days is like, I don't got this. And so why would I want to be here? Um, that's been my life. But it's cool because I deal with the pain. If I wasn't so solid, then I would melt in the rain. And the cycles I was in, they do nothing but just keep on repeating. So I felt insane. I held tight to my selfish ways, wouldn't seek help cause I would self-medicate. But when you look at me, just know that it's never too late. I think we all have our own way of dealing with the things that we go through. One, because we want the world to know that we're strong. We want the world to know that we can handle our own problems. And because we have to, like we have to be strong. So we, we ha literally have to deal with the pain that we're going through. And so half, um, or a lot of us, depend on different coping mechanisms uh, to deal with life, to battle depression, to battle suicidal thoughts, to combat the negativity in our lives because we're trying to find a way to break through. And my coping mechanisms have varied. Um, a lot of it was, you know, like using alcohol to go to sleep, um, overeating when I felt like nothing was working. Food never hurt me other coping the mechanisms I won't talk about just yet but uh we all have our own like ways of self-medicating 
And so because we think we figured it out with these substances or these ways of coping, we don't talk about our problems to a lot of people and we don't ask for help because, hey, what is talking about it gonna do? Safe to say I found my rhythm. Don't you dare feel sorry for me. I am not a victim. We got problems and we fix them. It's just for me, music navigates the pain of my system. I literally found my purpose. I found uh, myself throughout like these years of my journey. And this year I'm like, man, listen, I've lived past 25. We finna start doing something. Like, I'm trying to build a life that I don't want to escape from. So I found this day by day thing that I'm doing. It's my rhythm where it's anything that's happening tomorrow or anything that's happened yesterday, forget about it. Today's enough. And so everything that's in front of me for today, I got that. I've, I've found my rhythm. And any choice that I've made, I've made it, you know, with my own brain. So the uh, decisions that I made to lead to consequences, good or bad, don't feel sorry for me. I made the choice. Like, we have to choose to fix our problems the best way we know how, but literally should feel, uh, or literally should figure out how to fix the problems the best way, not just the best way we know how. So we got problems and we fix them, but right now I'm venting through this music. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to get to them. But I'm I'm really venting through this song. So just let me be. <laughs> Beating the odds, I love that. If I ain't learning my lessons and I mustn't have had enough yet. Lord knows I can't be upset. Cuz every single time somebody tries to help, I change the subject. One of the best feelings in the world are when you're dealing with something and like like depression and you find this space where you're like oh my gosh I know how to deal with this I, I love like beating the odds because there are a lot of things that will come up against you in life that are literally there to try to defeat you but they're meant to build your character. They're meant to build who you are so that you can help the next generation. And so half of these things that come up against me, I'm like, man, I'm ready to like, I'm ready to go at it. Cause if depression didn't kill me and suicidal thoughts didn't kill me, what makes you think that you are? So I'm gonna beat these odds. Um, and half the time <laughs> when people are trying to help I don't like to burden them force myself to go it alone I'm surprised I haven't broke any bones take it easy they don't even need to see me like this I hid myself at home and I I held tight to my selfish ways and wouldn't seek help cause I would self medicate but when you look at me, just know that it's never too late. Um, oftentimes throughout my life, I have been in my room by myself, um, ashamed of what I've been through. Um, focused on not being a negative vibe around people. 
not wanting my not drama but like my things that I go through in life to negatively affect others and therefore I decided to go through it alone because even though we all go through things I want people to like I want people to have the best life and and so much of me has always felt like if I'm around then their energy is going to go down or their vibes going to go down or their thoughts are going to be like sheesh and now they're depressed and it's my fault and so I'm like nah we gotta we gotta stick it out alone and self medicate and do all of this you know but what I realized is through all of my thinking that it's never gonna work or it's late in life to start, I realized that it's not too late because I keep waking up. And if I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, I'm not gonna sit here and stay in this funk. I'm not gonna stick here and stay in this cycle that I built for myself. I dug the grave. And I found out that it's not too late, man. So here I am. Freaking, it's 2022. We outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all, we all the way outside, man. Uh, I started the year with getting my keloids removed. And we're like near the end of the year and a young and eaten off streams, which is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm glad I started. <laughs> Why not start? I'm going to be honest with you, right? Leaving the studio, like after I recorded it, I hopped in the Uber. And I played it for my Uber driver because I'm always like, you know, my name's Gift of Hands and I'm a music artist. So I played it for this Uber driver and he was like, wow, man, I can hear this on the radio. This is one of those songs. And when I got home, my parents said the same thing and I shared it with a couple of other folks that was like, this is the one. This is before release. And whole time I'm like man y'all lying <laughs> like y'all playing relax like it's it's another song uh but when I released the song man everybody like from the beginning everybody kept saying those three words this the one and I was like you can't sit here and make this up because I didn't tell people to say this the one um and like Everybody felt drawn to it because it was so open. Like, I was so open in my lyrics of uh, what I've been through. And from that point, like, really realizing that, oh my gosh, this might be the one. Man, all the way till now, it's just been impact. Impact is, wow, man, like, it's bigger than numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, um, you might see me or hear me talking about numbers from time to time. Like, like when I got my first million views on TikTok in the first week. Uh, or the fact that the song literally has 98,000 Shazams right now. Um, but the impact, man. People saying that this song has stopped them from committing suicide or this song has stopped them from doing something stupid or help them start their day or help them turn their life around. Like the, the impact is what I've been so graced by, so humbled by all of these months. And I'm just grateful because this is coming from pain. You know, like, this is coming from a real place of hurt. And for people to say, 
like you're basically your pain helped me heal. <laughs> you, that's that's very powerful. It's very strong, and it's not something that I take for granted at all. Every step of the way, like I just want people to get out of their misery, cause I'm getting out of mine with the song. <laughs>